Okay, hello and welcome to this price ladder analysis video. Uh, I'm going to be going through a certain setup that we saw. Well, actually, it's it's kind of a, a setup that we saw over a risk event. So really, we're going to go through um, the last NFP print in the Bund futures. So we're looking specifically at the Bund futures, a market that I cover very often. Uh, the date is the uh, 6th of November, I believe, 2015, uh, just after the NFP number. Uh, so the number came in as a very big beat. Um, we were expecting something of the order of 180,000. We got something of the order of 270. Um, so there was a, a particularly big reaction in the market obviously as as market participants sort of pricing in the risk of a potential hike in uh, December so uh, the market took a pretty big move um had a pretty big move to uh the downside um and we're going to currently be looking at the market at after it's moved through a pretty key zone uh, at around um I think that level was 155. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the level was 155.71. A very big level in the buns. We took out. We just flushed through that uh, and then made our way. So the low, that key area, as we just, as I just said, uh, was at those 155.71s. We flushed through, made a low at the 155.63 level, uh, and we're going to be taking a look at. The price action just after that, just thereabouts after that, uh, when the market's trading around the 77.78 mark. So what I'll do is uh, I'll play the recording. Like I said, the key area that we were talking about, just as I got this marker out, is this 155.71s. Uh, we're going to be playing that and seeing how the market reacted um, at, after that. So just pay attention to what I'm saying. Obviously, the the price action is a little quicker than usual. Uh, so I'll try and go through as, as quickly as possible, but just try and stay tuned to what I'm saying uh, as and when I'm going through it, just so you guys can um, stay tuned with, with the moves that we're seeing. Okay, so here we go. The market's trading at 155.74. As we said, uh, we've basically just seen the flush lower. So we had that key level here. We flushed lower, and now we've bid back up, and now we're trading around these... Uh, this 155.77 area, and we're watching very quite intently uh, to see how the market uh, reacts. So, for argument's sake, um, let's just say we were short. And I'm not doing this because I've seen anything on the price ladder. I'm just trying to make a point here um, that I'm, I'm, for example, short in the market at 155.78. Now, I know for a fact, and for my technical analysis, that if the market um, can hold an offer specifically below these 83s because I've seen in price action in previous in previous days between around 74 to 83s is really the area uh, I'm looking at uh, and also obviously it's lower 1571s but if we can hold below these 83s I'd like to be short and I'm looking for a continuation move if we get back above 83s for any particular reason uh, I'm going to try and cover my trade so let's just say for now we're trading below these 82s 83s and the market's holding an offer so I am going offside when it gets up to these 83s um, not by very much about five ticks but as soon as it gets through it that's where I'm going to start considering getting out so let's just say for argument's sake that I'm short and a lot of market participants are potentially short and they're looking for continuation move we've seen that um, price action come into the market after uh, the pretty big beat in the NFP print um, and now look at this this size that's just coming on the bid here at 155.78. He's popped up at 79s now. Uh, it's uh, he's now gone to 80s. So I, I'm going to have to possibly get out at 884s here, just because the market is now bidding up with some particular size coming in on the bid. That's particularly interesting because if he starts chasing the market higher, in particular in these thin markets, you know it's gotten quite thin. Look how the size coming in here on the bids. Even a 400 lock can can take it up a few ticks. So, you know, again, if that size comes back into the market, I might be be looking to actually go with it. 
So he's just popped up there at, at 92, so I'm going to try and front run him by a tick. I'm not looking for much, but I'm looking for just a bit of a reaction uh, to the upside. I do want to stay short. I do want to stay short overall, but as I'm seeing there's a bit of um, a buyer coming into the market, I'm going to try and take it out. I'm seeing uh, some size at 99s and nine, uh, double O's, so I'll try and get out of my size here at 98s real quick and that's just a very very quick quick scalp but I just wanted to show you guys that price action when an 800 or a thousand law steps in into the market whether he's spoofing or not uh, he can move the market very easily um, you know five six seven ticks maybe even sometimes a full basis point uh, just based on that order flow so now we've just come through those double O's 99's uh, we're trying to hold a bit here as you can see we're doing quite a bit of an exchange of contracts in 99's the market's trying to stay bid around this area but remember we've just had a significant move you know the market's range is very very big the higher the days at 51's you know we're trading all 50 ticks um, lower here and it, we're potentially looking for sell opportunities now we know the area just by our basic technical analysis that we want to sell is these 08s so we're going to actually put in an uh, an offer here at 8s uh, because at 08s is 07s 08s is our 50 percent of the day now it seems uh, there's quite a bit offered at 08s and i would naturally put my offer at 07s but for argument's sake, again, I'm going to put my offer in at 08s just to show you guys um, what could potentially happen when you're not paying attention to the order flow, you're not paying attention to the order book. So if I was in at 08s and just waited there for my fill because I was very conservative in such a volatile market, it doesn't really pay to be that conservative. You want to actually try and be a little bit more aggressive. So now we've come off of 06s, we've come down to 00, uh, so from price action, perspective if I can just highlight highlight what we've actually done so far um, so we've had that move lower from the figure um, we've moved a little bit higher we broke those 71s in here came back above we're trying to trend uh, trade a little bit higher and now we're getting up to these 06s we've got up to those 06s 08s we've actually traded 08s as you can see we actually haven't haven't uh, filled us at 08s uh, we've come back down to about double O's, 99's, and now we've traded back to those 08's. So we, this is 06's, these are our 08's, and now you, as you can see we're coming off slightly here at 05's. Now, um, just mind you, you know, from, from a trading perspective, what you're going through psychologically and emotionally, you really want to be short this market and you haven't gotten filled here at 08's. So a bad trader at this moment in time could potentially wait until he sees a bit of selling now because he hasn't been filled he might be trying to offer it a bit lower offer it a bit lower not getting filled and the second he sees a little bit of size come to market he might actually try and sell it um, quite aggressively um, so let's just see how we react we know that the pinch point in the market now we've come down and tested as we said we went from 06s down to double O's over here night well slash 99s you know, that's the area. If we get back into that area, which we just did very quickly at those double O's, had you sold these double O's, you would have gone straight offside six ticks because we came and traded these sixes again. We want to see flow through that area. And now you can see this is our reaction. We've just come down to here, quickly bounce back up to these 06s. Now we're waiting potentially for some flow to come into the market to actually sell this. We didn't get our filler 08s, and that was just for argument's sake. If we can actually see some sort of price action, bam, 700 lot just comes to market. I'm going to sell in front of that guy, regardless if he moves them, if he moves the market or not. I know um, that he could potentially be looking to sell. If he doesn't get his fill, he might start coming to market. So I've got very very tight risk. Um, he has vanished at the moment, so I'm very vigilant. You know, if it gets back above my price, I'm out quickly. But notice how it doesn't actually get to my price. Maybe that guy with an 800 lot saw that he wasn't getting filled, so he starts selling slight, you know, slices of his size. You've got 400 lot here. You might have sold a little bit more at market, and he's coming to market now. You can see the markets now come come down from double O's to to 92s in a very very quick fashion. Now notice the 600 lot shows up at 90s now. Um, it now turned into quite a bit of size. It's pushed the market significantly lower. Now, obviously this market does actually continue trending um, lower and we, we find value a lot lower than what we are trading right now at the moment uh, but I'm just uh, just from argument's sake I just want to show that 
from a mental approach in watching price action is sometimes where you can get things very wrong. Um, you know, because in this example, the market did did find a uh, you know some resistance at 06, which we knew sevens sevens and eights were 50 percent. We came down to the belows 99s, right? We came right back up to 08s. Let's say we didn't get our fill. We came back down to double O's 99s, bid back up to 06s, and then on our way back down, just in this area in here, we saw our 700, I think it was 780 lots pop in on the offer. And then that's was, that was really, um, you know, right in here, sorry, right in here was our selling up opportunity. Because after that, pretty much the market found some, you know, some heavy size come into the market, and that's where we've seen uh, that move lower back into these areas that we were trading before. But this is this is the key, you know, if you were trading emotionally and you were and you were thinking about this trade in an emotional fashion, you know, you have to notice that sometimes, even though, um, even though this is the area you want to sell, um, a great trader would actually be patient, try and take the sell. If he wasn't filled, he maybe try and get in a little bit lower, but he knows uh, more or less that this is the area he wants to be selling. This is the area he wants to be selling. You know, as soon as you see quick moves to the downside and you start selling into these areas, you start give, getting susceptible to algorithms and you start becoming algo fodder, as you call it. You know, if you start selling in these areas, you know, the no-no trade, is if you're starting to sell in these areas here, so you're selling in here, and every time the market has a little pop-up, on these little pop-ups, you start, you know, buying back your positions here. So you start covering at these areas in here. So these, you know, you could have taken easily if you had sold it here, took another, took one loss here, sold it here, took another loss here. You take, you know, here, you take two loss, two losses, two quick losses. And you're already close to your stop on the good trade that comes. You don't. You're not. You can't afford to actually put the size you want to put on uh, the actual trade. So, just from a price action perspective, I know. Though you know, some people argue if you watch the price ladder too much, you might actually, you know, get a little. You might form this thing called tickitis, where the market moves a few ticks, and you have. You just feel like you have to get in. So I'm just trying to show you guys an example of when the market can trade within little areas and zones and you have to look for the pinch point understand where the pinch point is the pinch point we knew was around these double O's and when that the size came in it gave you good risk reward you could have sold it there as opposed to selling it just above there and taking the risk because it was trading within this range uh, and so long as it was trading within this range in here you were going to be susceptible to these little uh, algorithm f algorithm flicks back and forth in this range. So if you were selling here, you had to have your risk above 08s. You couldn't be selling it and emotionally stopping out at 06s, 07s when it just didn't look right. Um, yeah, it didn't look right because it pops up really quickly. But just, you know, if you're going to sell it there, you have to have your risk above here. Um, and I would probably say the best way to do it is probably sell below here as opposed to above here. And I know it's a little bit counterintuitive for anyone that retail trades. Um, it is better off sometimes to sell below uh, the area where you're looking because you're waiting for that price action confirmation. Um, so that's basically what I wanted to cover in this price ladder stream. Um, two little things, obviously we saw the first front run where the 900 law came in and pushed the market higher. And then on this little setup uh, where the market comes into an area you want to sell and being patient for when the price action actually confirms that we're moving away from an area. Uh, because, you know, in this little this little box that I drew here, you know, it didn't last that long. It might have lasted maybe three to four minutes, if that. Um, but those three to four minutes when you're trading big size can feel like eternity. So you have to understand um, what you're looking for and how you're going to execute with efficiency and effectiveness when the opportunity presents itself. Right. Thank you guys very much, guys, for listening. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of the trading day, and we'll be together very soon again. Uh, bye for now.